Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and in today's episode, we're going to be continuing on with our VGC 2021 content and featuring a team-based all-around Tapu Koko. Today, I think it's a nice Pokemon that's uh, been maybe a little bit forgotten about. We have seen it here or there, but it's not really had the impact in the format like it's had in previous formats where it's been available. So it provides the electric train through that electric surge ability, can really take advantage of that through its own electric type attacks. It's got a phenomenal 200 base speed stat, which is just incredible. You know, it's one of the fastest Pokemon still in the format. And then you can pair that up really nicely with Regieleki, who is pretty much the fastest Pokemon in existence and uh, can take uh, really good use of, uh, make good use of the terrain as well. Then the rest of the team's made up of Landorus Theory in form, Porygon 2, Glastria, and Gyarados. So Gyarados, another strange pick for the team, but it does provide uh, a little bit stability for a water type. It gives us a little bit of an extra option against things like Rillaboom. Obviously, we still will get hit pretty hard from grassy glides and things like that, but we've got options to take that terrain away, and we've got the, the flying stab there, and Gyarados provides us with a grass stab as well, which is quite nice as well as some ground immunity which pairs nicely with the landorus as well and then we've got that trick room switch with the Porygon 2 and the Glastria, which we all know Glastria in a trick room environment is very strong. So we've got the Lumberry on the Glastria as well, helps us against opposing sleep if we composition our electric terrain well enough. And it also provides uh, some kind of countermeasures to being burned from Will-O-Wisp and, and other burning moves. So, uh, all in all, I think a really nice balanced team. It'll be nice to showcase it today. As always, there will be a Pokepiss down in the description of this team. And there will be a rental at the end of the episode if you guys would like to try this team out for yourselves on the doubles rank ladder. So without further ado, friends, we'll jump into a couple of games. We'll pilot the team. We'll talk through some of the, the, the ways in which the team can function, can run. And uh, at the end, like I say, I'll throw up the rental and then you guys can go away. If you'd like to take it away, try it for yourselves. And as always, if you do enjoy this sort of content, please Please do take a minute to smash that like button. It really does help the uh, the video out if you are enjoying it, of course. And uh, do consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed to the channel for more of this content and other Pokemon content that we cover here on the channel. So we got Infamous up as our first opponent and they're playing a team of Rillaboom, Heatran, Grimmsnarl, Tapu Fini, Urshifu and Zapdos. So. I think one of the first things to kind of um, highlight here is that the fact that they do have terrain of their own through the Rillaboom, uh, that could be quite tricky to deal with. But the other side of the coin is if we can get our own Trick Room up with P2 and get Glastria on the field, then we're going to be in a great position, you know. Uh, my, my opponent really hasn't got too much to deal with um, taking huge damage from Glastria um, and things that perform well in a Trick Room, at least anyway. I think Tapu Koko is going to be very pivotal for us in this one um, in all honesty and I think I do want to lead Regieleki it gives us options of screens up top if we want to uh, lead off with that um, maybe P2 is not a bad lead here at all you know and we could bring Tapu Koko on the back and then Glastria and then does that leave us short anywhere for anything because what we need to look at is maybe the Zapdos I think Regieleki Tapu Koko deal with that pretty well Tapu Koko deals with Urshifu, Tapu Fini, Grimmsnarl it's just really the Heatran which then if we're looking at what we're bringing here it's the Glastria that's going to help deal with that could have a sugar berry and also Glastria can deal with the Rillaboom pretty well so it's just about controlling terrains and being able to kind of get some kind of clinch knockouts and key knockouts when when the opportunities arise because it's not going to be easy against like such a strong build but that's what's going to happen every every opponent you pretty much come across on the battle spot ladder at the minute uh, going to have established teams it's kind of that's that kind of mid part of the format now where everyone's had enough time to practice and kind of get their ideas together so uh, it's always going to be tricky and it's always adapting as well you know the, the format is always changing but we are going to see uh Rillaboom and we are going to see Grimmsnarl come out from my opponent okay so we do have the option here where we could potentially go for a trick room uh, we do get the special attack boost, which is really useful. Um, so we've got a couple of options here. We could go for a light, a reflect straight away. Get a reflect up. Uh, we want to take a look at my opponent's team. Um, it's a good mix of physical and special, you know. Um, so we, you know, we could sit here, get our screens up early on. Might benefit us in the long run. Um, or we could. I think we'll go for a reflect here and we'll try 
We could just get some damage onto the Rillaboom here and then set a Trick Room up the next turn. That might not be a bad idea. Um, yeah, let's do that. So there's a Grassy Glide coming out. Is this banded? It looks like it is, but that takes us down to our Sash, which is fine. Um, we don't mind losing Regilecki as well, especially the next turn if we can get a Trick Room up, because that just gives us the free switch to Glastria that we want. Get some nice damage on to the Rillaboom as well. This plus one try attack doing huge damage as well. And the Spirit Break coming out into P2, so re re like resetting that special attack boost that we had. So not seeing any screens here from my opponent. One of the options that we do have now as well is we don't really necessarily need to set a Trick Room, but we could potentially uh, switch P2 out. Uh, to tap Coco and set a light screen and that really sets us up for the rest of the game or we could just Volt Switch out and get P2 onto the field um, and preserve Regilecki which might not be a bad idea but maybe go for the Grim Snarl here with the Electro, uh, the Volt Switch switch in Tapu Coco and then we'll get P2 on the other side of the field get our special attack boost up uh, active and then we've got Tapu Koko Porygon 2 on the field and then Tapu Koko can stop pressuring the Grim Snarl as well take away this grassy terrain which is the the big thing to prevent the uh, the Rillaboom from taking advantage of these priority attacks which is one of its strongest things especially if it is holding that choice band as well you know so let's see um there's a reflector from the Grim Snarl which is fine uh, so it's going to utilize that option that it's got there but we'll preserve Reggie Alecki in the process here which is quite important get some really nice damage onto that Grim Snarl as well um, and we'll get P2 back onto the field and now we're going to be in a good position to go for a Dazzling Gleam I think the Grim Snarl at this point is probably forced to go for a light screen this next turn um, and we'll get the special attack boost again so that's there which is ideal because we really want to try and keep that and by getting the Tapu Koko out in the field now um, it does allow us to kind of protect the P2 from any sort of uh, spirit break drops that we would see because the Dazzling Gleam uh, even though it might not pick up the, the Grim Snarl behind the light screen, we'll be in a position with the Trick Room the next turn to be able to um, at least try attack it before it can get a Spirit Break off, which is always a nice option. Um, and the Rillaboom doing decent damage, but it's not really threatening a knockout here. We may see it switch out just because of the fact that it wants its grassy terrain back up and my opponent might want to take advantage of it later on in this game as well. So that's the other thing you've got to consider. Um... I'd kind of like if we can to preserve Tapu Koko here because I think the one thing that Tapu Koko provides us is a nice option. Ooh, what do we see in this trick from the Grim Snarl? Okay, well, that's full incense. Okay, well, they get the... Uh, okay, well, that's not ideal, but we do take the Grim Snarl down. Do lose our Life Orb. Maybe with the Life Orb, we take down the, uh, the Rillaboom here. Um, but that's fine. And now we're in a great position to go. We we'll just switch into maybe Glastria this next turn from Tapu Koko. Go for the try attack into Rillaboom and then try and take as much advantage of our Trick Room turns as possible once we get Glastria on the field. But it will depend on what my opponent brings in next to that Rillaboom. Um, but we've got to try and keep ahead of the game because obviously with the terrain disruption that my opponent has available to them through the grassy terrain on the Rillaboom, then, you know, we want to try and keep the, the electric terrain is kind of, you know, as an option for us as possible. We, we don't want to lose Tapu Koko at this point because it does give us a lot of protection, especially from sleep and things like that. Even though, you know, maybe not in this game that that's super relevant, um, it is still um something that we need to consider okay so we'll go for the try attack into rillaboom and although i do say i don't know but this is zapdos going to be able to knock out yeah yeah we'll be able to but at the same time i don't want to switch like this is where my train of thought is changing because i don't want to switch glastria into a big attack from the Zapdos. Uh, that's not something we want to do, especially when we're not maxed. At least we want to try now and get the Glastria in for free. So if we can do that through a Volt Switch combination here from the Tapu Koko, that would be amazing. We're going to be able to take down the Rillaboom anyway. And the Zapdos is one of those Pokemon, you know, because of its flying type, it's not going to be able to take advantage of the electric terrain. So we don't need to worry about that too much here. Um, now we are going to see it is going to be the Zapdos. Yep. And it does have the reflect up, so we've got to keep that in mind as well, you know. It does have the reflect. 
um, to protect it from the Glastria attacks, uh, which, you know, will prolong its uh, longevity a bit more. Uh, there's a try attack from P2. We'll be able to take down this Rillaboom, and it's not switching out at all. It's just stayed on the field. It's done a nice, sizable amount of damage, hasn't it? Max Flare coming out, and it's going to be into Tapu Koko. This will take us down, yeah. But it, like I say, it does give us that free switch into Glastria now. And we are going to be able to remove the sun. And we should be able to take at least one Max Flare. Even though that they have got um, uh, the Life Orb. Because we'll take away the sun. We should be able to take a Max Flare. And uh, Urshifu coming in. Mm -hmm. A little bit trickier. So... What do we do here? We need to take away. We li literally need to take away uh, the sun. So that's not an, that's a no-brainer here. Dark fighting. We know it's not choice band, so it is probably sashed. Um, there's a part of me that wants to double in on the Urshifu here because I feel like with the sash, if we don't attack it, then it's going to get some damage off. And we can change the weather, but I don't think we're going to be able. We're going to be capable of taking close combat and a max flare. So we'll remove that one. There's a chance that the Zapdos may as well, you know, might go for a Max Guard here, fearing the uh, the, the Max Hailstorm. So we'll see. As long as we get some damage onto the gla the uh, the Urshifu, though, that's fine. Even if it does protect, that's that's really the big thing here. We just need to get some damage. Break that focus sash. Um, but a combination between Max Hailstorm, even behind a Reflect, and the uh, the Tri Attack boosted on the the Porygon too, we should be able to pick it up. Okay, okay, we're gonna see the detect, the detect. We're gonna see no Max Guard either, but we do get the Hailstorm. Mm. Okay. Right. Well. Ah. Uh, okay. We're gonna see the Max Flare come out again. Yep, into the Protect. That's a bit of a waste there. Okay, well, we take that pretty comfortably. It means we can take another one at least. So we've got the option now to go for the Ishifu again this turn. Uh, we do need to worry about Sucker Punch though, because that's the thing. Uh, did our Reflect just wear off? Or oh, there's their Reflect is one turn. Our Reflect is just worn off. Okay. We're going to be able to take another Max Flare from the Zapdos. It's just whether or not we see a Sucker Punch here. That is the, the question. Like, is my opponent going to be... Is it going to go for the Sucker Punch to get that residual damage? And I would imagine probably yes. Can they take... I mean, we could Max Guard here. We could Max Guard. That might be n not a bad option here. Go for the Tri Attack and just Max Guard, I think. And then the next turn, we've definitely got the KO onto the Zapdos. Their Reflect then wears off. So um, it's always something to consider as well. We don't always need to attack. So the opposing Urshifu going for that at Detect again. We'll get some nice free damage there. The Zapdos going to go for the Max Flare. Um, and yeah, that's more than enough. That boosted Porygon 2 going to be enough to take that down. So that's really ideal. There's the Max Flare. And now the Zapdos going to be in an awful position going into this next turn as we've got one more turn of our Dynamax left and they haven't and they got one more Pokemon to bring in so let's see if we can close this one up because um, oh I thought they had more Pokemon left and <laughs> they've just got the Zapdos okay <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking oh they've got one more Pokemon to come in but no okay this battle has been Maybe a little bit longer than what I was expecting. Okay, I'm going to protect, but still fine. Uh, we've got the Max Hailstorm. We'll take away the sun, which is the main thing here. And um, we're still... I think we've got one more turn of Trick Room left. So we'll be able to just easily deal with the Zapdos between the two, Glastria and Porygon 2. But I think the thing is as well, like the, the, the Tapu Koko and Regieleki kind of helped us set up this, this kind of board position towards the end here where we're able to get... Uh, these two onto the field and um, really disrupt quite well because without being able to disrupt the grassy terrain okay the trick room end in there um then you know the the Rillaboom's doing way more damage than we want to see it doing and i think p2 is going to be able to just clean this one up without going for the trick room here and even if not then we can switch glastry out the next turn get the trick room up get it back in 
and deal with the Zapdos that way. But P2, I think, going to be more than capable of dealing with the Zapdos by itself. Plus one special attack makes such a difference. And I think the key was, you know, where we were switching around quite a lot early game to make sure that we got the P2 back in, reset that Spirit Break drop, and then took advantage of that, that special attack boost. Late game, especially against the Oshifu there, you saw how useful that was. Um, but very good game to my opponent and um, a nice way for us to kind of pick up a nice a nice win to ease us into today's one at least. So with that under our belts, we will move into our next game, which um, hopefully will just be as good as that last one. So... Yeah, and just to kind of mention as well, obviously with things going on at the minute, which I'm sure I don't need to spell out for you guys, I can't really go into detail with them, but things going on outside of just the channel this week, my time's been tied up a little bit more than I'm used to, so I'm not really able to get uh, as much consistent content out as I would have liked to have done. So hopefully going into next week, got a lot more time, we'll be able to try and get the daily uploads back. I've got a lot of exciting, actually new series ideas coming up, so we'll be starting to do those over the next few weeks and into the new year as well as a bunch of new teams as well to feature so um i i really do appreciate you guys hanging with me while i've had stuff going on i'm not being able to get as much content up, uh, up but uh it, your, your patience will be rewarded i promise you that so um we got an ex-opponent anyway blue they're rated like 50 53rd i think or 56th in the in the rankings at the minute so doing pretty well with this team clefairy celesteela spectria rotom heat reggie rock my boy and glass, uh, Gastrodon. Uh, okay, so mm, lots of stuff that makes uh, the Reggie Alecky type of Coco not really an optimal uh, option here. Um, but at the same time, I do like Reggie Alecky to come out with screen support. Um, and it does give us options to pivot as well. Um, I think we want to go P2 for sure. Helps us against the Spectre a bunch. Uh, Gyarados is going to be not bad, but obviously not great. I think we need Landorus. I think we go Reggie Alecki, um, Landorus. I think we go P2, and then I th still think, I still believe we go Glastria in this one. This one could be one where we bring uh, the double Intimidate, but I think we need, we definitely need an Electric type to help us against the Celesteela. Um, and with the Clefairy support, it's going to be difficult, you know? We could see the Spectria Clefairy lead, which could be a little bit awkward to deal with for sure. But, yeah, it's Reggie Rock Clefairy, so there we are. Reggie Rock, one of those Pokemon, man. My boy, I really want to get a shiny as well. Thinking about, obviously, with the stream schedule, I will be doing that. Hopefully, we have a, a proper stream schedule sorted for next week. Uh, I'd love to do some shiny hunts as well on there. So if you're interested in seeing those, Reggie Rock would definitely be one that I'd look for. Um, let me know down in the comment section below as well. It's just a little bit of a side thing from just VG content all the time. Right, well, what we can do, we can go for a reflect here pretty pretty safely. Um, and I think we want a U-turn out. Um, we'll go into the Reggie Rock because, you, you know, you might see the Clefairy Protect here. Like, yeah, cheeky old Clefairies like to do. Um... And it just means we can pivot out the Intimidate and uh, kind of keep cycling that because that's the big, big key for us um, against Regirock. We want to kind of keep slowing it down as much as possible. Uh, the U-turn not doing too bad damage. We'll take that all day long and we can bring P2 in on the field because what we want to try and do is remove the Regirock and then Glastria has a pretty decent time here, uh, you know. Uh, we get the special attack boost which is very useful and uh, we see stomp and tantrum come out um behind the reflect and minus one reggie lecky gonna be able to take that now let's have a quick look at what my opponent's team is like because it's very specially based after the reggie rock so maybe useful trying to get the light screen up but i don't think right now is the time so i think what we're gonna do is just try attack we're going to see a follow me here. 100% follow me. I'm going to just Volt Switch. Oh, we're not seeing a follow me. Okay. Well, there we go. Well, I don't mind this too much. We want to keep Reggie Lecky for later. It's a very important Pokemon to us. And we'll get Landorus back in. Um, And that is going to definitely put that Reggie Rock in a not a great position, at least. But, I mean, if we see an Icy Wind here, it's not ideal either. Because uh, Clefairy can carry Icy Wind, Moonblast, you know. So... Uh, there's a rock slide, but we brushed that off pretty easily. 
Um, P2 flinches, which is not great. And the Moonblast coming out into Landorus. Okay, but with the Assault Vest, we should take that pretty pretty easily. And uh, now we do have the option here. We could go for Max Quake. Um, or we just go for another U-turn here, you know? Um, and this could be the turn where we get Glastria onto the field because it's the Regirock's so weak at this point anyway. I feel like it's not a bad opportunity to do that. Get Glastria and onto the field. Start getting some big damage up. Get rid of that Clefairy. And from there we can we can start to do some work. Because the Reggie Rock is not going to be hitting as hard as what you kind of it would have been doing previously. So there's a U-turn. And uh, get a bit more chip damage into it. And yeah, it can max itself, but I mean at this point it's so weak. Minus two, it's not gonna be doing half as much to Glastria as you uh as you would initially expect it to be doing. And yeah, we probably are bringing it in on a rock slide, but as long as you don't flinch, which is the biggest concern here. Yeah, and Glastria taking that. I mean not even in Dynamax are taking that pretty comfortably. There's a trick room. Perfect! Okay. Right now, now we can start to do some work. So I think we do max Glastria and kind of tempted to go for the max Knuckle, but at the same time, we probably just want to go after the Clefairy here. Uh, but I am going to target into Reggie Rock and I am going to go for a. a hmm, are they going to protect Reggie Rock? That's the thing. They haven't so far, so there may be like an Assault Vest on there. That's the other thing. We could max Quake as well, but like, ha what has my opponent got to bring in? That would be good against the, the, the Quake and Celesteela, obviously, that Pokemon that would be very good, but nothing really taking the um the Max Hailstorm super well. No, I think what we'll do is No, we'll, we will go after the Reggie Rock. We'll punish no follow me. There we go. Okay, locked in just in time. Because I think yeah, if they're going to switch, they could follow me here, but that's fine. Uh, if not, we'll get some decent damage onto the, the Rotom. If there's no follow me, that's what I mean. So, um, in a combination of Max Hailstorm and the plus one try attack will be more than enough to get the Clefairy, for sure. Um, we'll just see what they like. And the Clefairy protecting the last turn, you would assume that they want to try and get the Rotom in for free here. Clefairy going for a double protect but failing unfortunately so we are going to get the max hail into the Rotom which is perfect and then this combination into that slot and try attack probably not going to be enough damage to pick up the knockout onto it uh, you're kind of hoping to do a little bit more damage but the max knuckle going to be uh, still an option for us as well um, and this doing yeah really nice damage there so max knuckle may mm, with the citrus berry probably not um, and the friend guard as well, obviously been the big thing here for us. That's, um, yeah, and the Clefairy now, you know, it went for the double protector. Good, could go for the protect again this next turn. Uh, it's just whether or not we go. No, I think we double up into it. I think we play the same game again. Because the Rotom here might go nasty plot, uh, or it might just max. But my opponent doing all the right things, you know, they're trying to stall out our max turns, you know, we pulled the trigger like earlier than them, so it's their job now to kind of mitigate our max turns and they're doing all the right things to do that. But um, now nah, they're just going straight for it. Straight for it. There's a combination here. I think you've got to follow me. You've got to follow me here to protect your Rotom and get the max flare off. With no... But the thing is, with no... Um, Nasty Pop Blues, it's nowhere near as, as threatening as sometimes you would see Rotom Heat be. Okay, so, help in hand. That changes things a little bit, but I still think we take it without the sun. Max Hailstorm. Maybe. I don't think this will be enough. Could have Max Knuckled. That would have been the play. That would have been the 100% play. It's hard, though, to do that play, you know, with a Clefairy sitting next to you. Um, okay, well. Oosh. Oosh. Okay. The sun coming up. We need to we need to max hail this next turn. Um our reflectors finally wear off. We don't have the option not to. Um the problem is they could max guard on the Rotom. They definitely could. They could max guard on the Rotom. But we do have Landorus in the back that we could bring in. There's the follow me finally. That's fine. If we remove the Clefairy now, that I'm happy with that. That's a good return. I feel for Glastria, you know. Um, that will do me fine. Um, 
that is more than enough. Okay, so we pick up the knockout there into the Clefairy with a critical hit. I think we needed the combination. Without the crit, we probably need the combination of the tri-attack, but it does mean we get the tri-attack now into the Rotom. So if that picks up the knockout, this puts us in a phenomenal position because we've got the chilling air boost. Um, and tri-attack may be able to do it, you know? Yeah, there we go. The crit coming in. Clutch for us in this one. Getting rid of that Rotom is huge for us. And now we still got the Trick Room up. Now we don't have any max turns left, unfortunately. But uh, like I say, we're sitting in a, a great position. So the crit, really unfortunate for my opponent there. Uh, allowing us the ability to take down those Pokemon. But Reggie Rock hitting the field once again. And what's the last Pokemon? Gastrodon. Okay. This is where we need the Gyarados, but never mind. We st we still got P2. We're fine. We're fine. Um, so I think what we'll do is go close combat into the Reggie Rock. Um, yeah, we'll go close combat there. We may lose, and we'll just go try attack. I mean, we could go Eerie Impulse into the Gastrodon. How many turns have um, Trick Room got that one? Is it worth just getting damage onto it? And we go Eerie Impulse into it and just really weaken it. Uh, yeah, I think we weaken it because the one thing is that we've got two Pokemon in the back. If Glastria goes down, then it, it becomes very difficult to deal with the uh, the Gastrodon with either of those two. Now, I know we've got P2 here, but I'm just thinking ahead. Can we just weaken it a little bit to make it easier for Landorus when it comes onto the field? Um, just to make sure that, you know, I'm not taking as much damage going forward. And there's the Earth Power, and it will be into Glastria. We will go down to this. Um, but we are going to get the Eerie Impulse. And the thing is now, we don't really want the Trick Room up anymore. Um, just because P2 is going to be faster than outside of the Trick Room. So we can just bring in Landorus. And we can utilize Landorus and P2 just to deal with this Gastrodon. And both P2 and Gastrodon do have Recover. So this might take a little bit of time. But maybe not. Maybe not as well. Let's see. We do have Rock Slide. There's always a way. And we do have Fly as well. So we can take advantage of that. Dodge some attacks from the Gastrodon. And maybe combination of fly and a couple of try attacks might be enough to do the job for us. So uh, let us see. Gastrodon, one of those Pokemon as well, you know. Uh, I feel like will start to be used a little bit more in this format because I think... Okay, well, there's the cancellation because I think it's a really good utility with that Storm Dream ability. You know, there are a lot of really potent grass types going around at the minute which makes it awkward but i think as well at the same time it's a very strong pokemon a really good option as well and nice ground type as well to consider for your team building okay well we get a bomb mushroom what a bonus okay like promised friends we need to get the rental team for you i'm gonna have to take a rental down that we have up currently but like i say i do have a bunch and i do apologize to those of you that have requested some of the older rental teams to be put back up i just haven't had the time to get those up yet but they are still to do so i will make sure i do put them up as soon as i can um team we're gonna get rid of now uh, oh, it's tricky. I think probably this one. I think this one's probably one of the older ones. So we'll not make that public. And we'll make room for our new Tap Coco team. Tap Coco team. But it's been a bit of a Glastria Porygon 2 show today, which I don't mind. I don't mind. And I'm sure you don't as well. That's a really strong combination. And, uh, you know, I'll, I really, really do love uh, Porygon 2 in this format. I think it's an incredible Pokemon. Um, and just that combination. The Gyarados is maybe a little bit of an odd pick. But, I mean, I think it probably works in there for certain situations. And a lot of the time, you know, you've got that Pokemon tagged on the end for specific situations. Um, so if you do use a team and you do end up using the Gyarados for that double Intimidate and whatever the situation feels right, do let me know down in the comment section below. Uh, it would be great to hear. But there is the rental team, my friends. Have a lot of fun with the team. I hope you really enjoy it if you do end up playing it. I think it's a really nice build. There's some really nice concepts in there, especially between the Regieleki and the Tapu Koko. That combination is so appealing just because of the electric terrain, the tra transistor ability on the Regieleki and just the sheer speed that that combination has you know you, we've seen in the past how good Tapu Koko and Alolan Raichu is but I feel like this combination is so much better like nothing against Alolan Raichu but Regieleki is a bit of a cooler Pokemon not <laughs> i'm gonna get roasted for that i don't know but yeah there's the team friends have a lot of fun with it thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode i i hope you have a great rest of your day and like i say thank you for bearing with me while i've not been able to get as much content out as i would have liked at the minute but we will be back on the content train starting next week for sure and uh, we've got a lot planned so it's going to be a lot of fun make sure you do check out the stream for players cup 2 this weekend it is the grand final starting this weekend so it's going to be great and then got a lot of amazing games and amazing players to feature over the weekend before we crown that players to cup 
champion which is going to be very exciting so if you do catch it i hope you enjoy it obviously myself lou adam and rosemary will be casting that event and uh, bringing you all the entertainment from the pokemon twitch channel so have a great rest of your day i might be able to get another video up before uh players cup 2 stream but if not i will see you for our next one whenever that will be friends take care of yourselves and bye bye